Mic check. Bon, 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 bon. Mic check. Bon, 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 bon. My mic sounds nice. Check done. What up, y'all? Should have got my, my first swig right there before we started the podcast. We got a, a nice little full house, man. We working through. As y'all know, man, every week it's, it's always something, man. Things don't ever go according to plan, but they always go, right? Uh, we definitely not going to miss a week, man. I hope you guys are having a lovely week. I'm waiting for Greg. He was on here. I'm waiting for him to pop back in. Y'all know what to do first, man. Let us know where you're watching from. We got a few people in here uh, from all over. So just jump in. Let us know where you're watching from. We got the lady print boss in the house. How's it going? How's it going? We got Milford, Ohio in the building. Y'all know where I'm at. I'm in Delaware. As always, you know, chilling at the shop. Uh, a lot of stuff going on this week for myself. Um, oh, I think this episode is right on time because tomorrow is the Impressions Expo Atlantic City. Um, I'm calling this my farewell. This might be my farewell stop here uh, unless something drastic changes. Um, I probably will not be attending uh, another Impressions Expo. Um Maybe won't go to Texas. I'm saying that right now. Just if I have to put it on the books right now, I probably will not be going to Texas. I probably will pop back up at Impressions in uh, Long Beach next year. Trying to figure fill, fill this entire thing out, but it's, it just doesn't really make a lot of sense for me to continue going. So I've been going back and forth about how I'm going to maneuver and different things like that. Away from my guy to come in so he can head up to Atlantic City. And get this thing rolling. Uh, last year, funny story on 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 the top of this, I seen uh, you know how in a movie, um, you see somebody and then like a bus rides by or you blink and then they missing, like they just be gone in that show. Uh, that's happened to me, right? And oddly enough, it happened with, with Matt from Pro World. After everything went down, I look up, I see him, I blink. He was gone like a, like like a ghost just disappeared. Like he had saw a ghost, and the next thing you know, he disappeared. Uh, you know, just the coward in him, I'm sure. But uh, we got a few people in here. Let me bring my guy Greg. Finally made it in here. Oh man. Oh man. I don't know. I don't know, G. I don't know, G. That hot spot ain't going to get it. We got Harrisburg in the building. We got the Bay in the building, Michigan in the building, ATL in the building. I can't have this conversation by myself. I mean, I could, but I don't know if I can really have this conversation by myself. New Orleans in the building. You know what I'm saying? So, let's see what's happening here. G trying to come in. So, he's moving into... uh, a new storage unit to work out of and messing up the flow as always something's gonna go wrong pg county i had a a, a roommate um from pg county i spent a little bit of time in, in my college days in pg county maryland dfw in the building jersey we will be there tomorrow hope you're attending the show hope you're attending the long oh, i said i don't know why i want to say long beach expo why well, I guess he's in the green room. Let's see if I can bring him on. Is he here or is he not here? Man, G. I don't know if this is going to work out with G. Let's see. Guess has muted themselves. Come on, man. I don't know what's going on here, but I'm here. And that's all that matters so we can kind of have this talk uh a lot of people uh definitely been messing me i always drop a little pro world listen my mission from here on out in life is to uh make sure that they never forget right and i ain't even done half i'm try still trying to get my bearings straight some different things rolling and going uh and to make my money outside of the t-shirt industry at least from this you know, from the internet, you know, this, this segment of the market is full of a ton of great content creators. You take that for what it's worth. 
All right, so I'm rebuilding. I'm trying to get things back rolling. In order to, all right, it looked like he on here clapping like he, like he got some good service as he freezes up. I don't know what this guy doing, y'all. I don't know what he's doing but holding up the show. We already 35 minutes behind schedule. But, uh, yeah, so we put some things together outside of the industry to kind of get the bearing straight. The web design stuff is going pretty well. Um, we started some classes. Um, as you guys know, my lady started some classes. Uh, we're going to kick them off in March. I mean, not March, in May. Um, and so... Just get in my very straight summertime. The flow's about to be running. But I got a mission in life from here on out is to make Matt from Pro World's life as hard as I possibly can. You know what I'm saying? One thing when you are dealing with a coward is you got to get in front of the coward. Okay? Until a man can have a conversation with a man, that's my mission in life. You know what I mean? So I don't think anybody should shop over there at Pro World uh, if they're a member of this community. Uh... To kind of give you guys a summary what the plan was and to have G kind of interview me. Uh, I actually saw a video from my guy at, let me pull up his YouTube uh, channel and figure out. I had it pulled up. But another DTF printer, he had kind of made a video uh, in general talking about kind of like the situation of what he had heard recently, which kind of sparked me. A lot of people really don't know what's going on. They think I had an issue with Super Color uh, and Rum over there. It really wasn't with them, although I don't agree with how they handled anything at all. Um, you know, just from a level of person to person, friend, mentor, uh, whatever you want to call it. You know what I'm saying? So I wanted to kind of really put my focus and attention into this time talking about this pro world situation. All right. So as you guys know, um, basically what happened and, and to drum it back, basically what happened, I said, I made a post and the post was talking about, uh, the world needs more creatives. Um, Adidas or pro world equals Adidas Stan equals Kanye. There's enough Adidas. The world need more Kanye's, right? So what Matt from Pro World tried to do is try to run and tell Rum and uh, a bunch of other companies. I'm not going to pull out a bunch of them. Rum and Mike from Supercolor. He ran and told them that I was being anti-Semitic because I made a Kanye reference, right? And one thing about today in society is uh, you cannot. Uh, it's like you can't disagree with somebody without or disagree or agree with somebody without embodying everything that that person says or is about so here's here's how this whole situation came about as you guys know in the past um i started uh first i started heat transfer warehouses um affiliate program uh with kirk over there um and so throughout that process i i was able to put a lot of other content creators in position to make money I had a contract with them. I think at the time it was like maybe two grand a month or something like that. Um, and so that contract kind of got spoiled. I think it was like maybe six months or something like that. I mean, I think I got maybe, uh, I want to say four months or so into that. Um, we had made a million dollars, right? And, and throughout that process, it was one of those things where... Um, they, I couldn't even figure out how well I was doing, right? So whenever I work with a company, I come online and I say, listen, as more, the more I know, the more I can do, right? And this is completely separate from being a content creator, right? I felt like me being a content creator and me doing the consulting that I was doing, it was two different things because really maneuvering and putting marketing campaigns and marketing, uh, you know, like marketing campaigns and efforts behind the company as the company. So when you do when you do something like that, it is a world of difference from you creating content and then spreading it out to your audience. Uh, to your audience, I did it in both ways. Okay, so when I'm going out and I'm saying like, "Yo, the content creation space isn't what you're making. It's definitely not what you make it out to be today." But when I go out and I say some of these things, what 
what I'm actually talking about is if you were looking at how I was making money, it wasn't purely because I was a content creator. Um, and how I maneuver as a content creator versus how I move as a consultant is two different things, right? I'm a person that's going to spread the wealth and I want other people to go out and be wildly more successful than me because I know how hard I'm going to work. And if you're doing well, I'm doing well. Like it doesn't bother me. I'm not one of those guys who has to be on top of and the only person in position to do certain things. So if I was to pull up my old list of content creators, I mean, we're talking about when you guys see me fly out to uh, Atlanta and sit with Rich. Rich had 3,000, I think it was 3,680 subscribers based on the charter when I pulled up on them and we were having these conversations. And I'm sitting down with Rich and I'm like, yo, Rich, you should be, you should surpass me to 100,000 subscribers, right? The, the production value, all of these different things that go into it. I'm like, bro, I'm just putting this stuff out here, right? But- what you have in your qualities, you should blow past me. And so in those midst of those things, I'm able to start this uh, influencer campaign and, and whole entire setup with Heat Trends Warehouse, right? So in the midst of there, what happened was because I'm a content creator, they wanted to look at me as a content creator. And if I wouldn't kind of answer the phone when they thought I should answer the phone and they were looking at me like I was an employee and I was supposed to do X, Y, and Z. And I'm like, ah, that's not really how it is. So what ended up happening with them was they just said, hey, we're going to end the term. All right, cool. The end the term, I'm not even going to trip. All right, no big deal. Call it a day, right? At this point, I do not know how much money I made. What ended up having to happen was I had to talk to uh, I had to get the number from him, from Kirk, over at uh, Heat Trust Warehouse, through Rum uh, over here at Supercolor. And when it came back to, it was a million dollars in revenue generated. Anything I'm saying right now, I could back up. So about four to six months later, I get a call. And this is like going into the holiday season at this point. Uh, maybe 2021. I don't know. I don't, time in the years, I, can have to, I will have to actually look at the stuff. So what ended up happening is I uh, I get a call and I actually pull right up in front of the shop. It's like, hey, Stan, we're going to pay you the rest of the contract. And I'm like, listen, bro, you ain't got to pay me the rest of the contract because the things that I implemented, the, the deal would change. Right now, we will be in my second term of the deal, of the renewal. And it would be it would be a lot different knowing going into it that in this situation where I was tasked with how are we going to get them doing well with super color product and sales and how are we going to implement this and implement that? And I got to come up with all of these strategies in order to make this um, make this collaboration work out, right? So I do that, whatever. So I get a call. Hey, we're going to honor the rest of that contract. Hmm, really, really odd to me. But whatever you say, you don't have to. You send the money, cool. You know, as you guys know, the Wallet Press was my idea. All of these different things that end up becoming staples and everything that you guys see from them was some of the stuff that I brought to the table. Now, my guy, and I, I think it was F-O-M-D-T-F on Instagram. Y'all should check him out. F-O-M or F-O-D uh, on Instagram. Uh, I watched a piece of content from him, and he's like, yo, you should, or why wouldn't you just do these things yourself? What I realized early on was like my talent, and which I knew coming into creating YouTube videos and all of that stuff, my talent came from me being able to market, right? When I say Supercolor wasn't the first company and what I did with Heat Trust Warehouse and what I did at this company, I was doing that when I was 23 with a book publishing company and Erica Mena and like a lot of different things that I was working on, different things like that. So I had to weigh the odds of what it was that I wanted to do in order to get to where I wanted to be, right? Um, and I do not have any regrets from what happened, right? I only thing that I would do differently is I would have never stopped my own print shop. I definitely probably wouldn't have spent as much time in LA, which which is what caused me to stop my own print shop um, beforehand, which is doing a hundred thousand dollars on my own. It wasn't that big of a deal, but as I started to travel and I started to do different things, uh, it took away. Right, my mistake was looking at their business as my own. Um, the the uh, 
that was the only mistake that I look back and I say that I made, right? Um, so moving on, uh, and there's a it's a lot of little things that I look back on, and there was a lot of signs going into it, right? So uh from that, generated a million dollars over there. I get a call one day. Um, you know, I, I reached out to them. We already talked about their ugly press in the beginning, and I kind of called it that. Why you got logos all over and all of that kind of stuff. So I get a call. So I drive up to Jersey and I meet with Matt. Matt's like, yo, I want you to shake things up here at the company. And I want you to, man, you know, rename the company, change the entire name of the company if you got to, right? And that's not that he wanted me to change the company's name of Pro World, but he wanted to shake things up because if you scroll way back and I was going to kind of, I got like some, I was going to drop in some video references and all of that stuff. Um, like, you know, this is a very, very, when I say the correlation to what we see in the music industry and how they exploit artists uh, or what y'all guys see with Cat Williams and Monique and all of that kind of stuff. This stuff is very, very real at all levels. When they want you out, they want you out. I don't know if y'all remember when my man Goon Life was causing terror through the industry, right? And who was on the front line fighting them and, and, and Rum's showing up to his office or uh, uh, Ruben's ready to cry uh, and calling his shop and leaving messages and all of that kind of stuff. You know, this is stuff that happened, right? In the midst of all of that, I'm willing to stand toe to toe and go to war for anybody or anything that I care about, that anybody that's on my team. So when I get this call from Matt um, and he wants to shake up the company, what I now know is I've already been burned by... Uh, he transfer warehouse and Kirk over there, right? Some of these things in 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 the professional world, you gotta just swallow it, right? I use it as a learning experience. So this time, as I go into this new deal, I'm like, you know what? I am going to go about this in a better way. I'm going to document the process. I'm going to, you know, do things a little bit more uh, organized than what I had done in the past because I had learned from dealing with heat transfer warehouse. So we roll into it and I'm going, I'm scrolling back right now on our Instagram page and I'm going to show you kind of what it looked like before. And the good thing is when they ask me, Hey, should we delete these old posts or should we go even more? Whatever we should do. I'm like, bro, you don't have to leave them. Let's just correct it moving forward. So the first thing that I do is I go through and whenever you are a consultant or you work for a new company at like one of these high level positions, right? We had a bunch of marketing uh, people come in and uh, marketing directors over at Supercolor, different things like that. I'm going to get to talk to you guys about. But whenever you get into a new company, it takes you about three months to figure out even what the F is going on. It's going to take you some time to get adjusted, to understand, and then to kind of understand what they're doing, what needs to change what roles people have, and then how things are kind of maneuvering, right? So we go in here, um, and I'm, first thing I do, I'm like, first thing we got to do is we got to identify some different content pillars, right? Because in the beginning of this entire thing, the only thing that was there was these white posts of heat presses, these white posts of vinyl, like every post looked like this right? No marketing, no energy, no life behind it or any of that stuff. And as you scroll back, you can see more and more. So on the very, very first team meeting that we had now, we had two meetings before I even took this on. I drove out there. We sat down. Stan, I want you to change the company. And keep in mind, y'all, I got, when I tell y'all I got proof of everything, I got proof of everything, okay? I did not because I had learned. So I actually hired somebody to even document what I was working on at this point. So second meeting comes, I go back and he presents me with an offer. It's like six grand a month, right? And I'm like, all right, cool. Here's the deal. And this is how crazy it's going to be, right? So in my mind, you know, when you go into negotiation, he who speaks first loses. But you always go in like, yo, I want to do this for X amount of dollars, right? And I think me and my girl, I'm like, you know what? I'm not going to leave with less than maybe. I might have said 4000 So we sitting at the table and he offered me six. And I'm just looking like, 
Okay. I ain't no, I'm not unfazed. I'm like looking unfazed or uninterested in it, right? Whatever, right? So a six thousand dollar deal is like seventy two thousand dollars a year, right? And so uh I sit there and I'm like, all right. Okay, that's cool. And all right, so when we start, don't don't give too much. Like, oh yeah, get excited. I ain't really counting. I was like, all right, that's cool. But let's really talk about different things, or ideas, or whatever. So the first one of the first ideas that I said, I said two things to him. I said I want to hear from your dad. Your dad started this company, and that is interesting. His dad started the company when um. Back before the NFL had licensing. So he was using transfers. He had like Eagles merch and like different transfers for people to use way, way back in the day. I think they was he said they were like four cents or a nickel um, of these Eagles logos and different things like that. And that's what the actual company was started on. And I'm like, that's what we, we need to tell that story. It's pandemic time. It's like his dad is still very active, wants to be around. I'm like, yo, we should talk, we should talk about your dad and how he started this. Well, why would people want to hear about my dad? And um, I don't know if that makes any sense. And, and I'm saying this for a very specific reason, which is going to come back later. Unfortunately, my co-host isn't here to kind of go in it. So I'm just going to give you all my story with everything that happened. Right. So I'm like, well, it's really interesting because the understanding that he, like one of the things that I had told my homegirl over at Stalls was sometimes you got to humanize the brand. Right. And your dad's story, your dad is one of us. You're not one of us. Right. Your dad is an entrepreneur. You are a nepotist. And I don't even know if that's the right way of saying it. Right. You are a nepotist. What I mean is your dad gave you the company. Right. Which is fine. No big deal. But I think the people want to hear from your dad. Um, and also we want to see some of the history. Right. We don't really know. Like your dad, the catalogs in the office are the old heat presses and different things like that. That stuff is very, very, very interesting, right, to us. At least to me. I'm a nerd about that stuff, right? And I think we all have a different level of respect for it because of where we are in our journey when it comes to doing some of this stuff, right? So cool. I come back. We get the offer or whatever the case is. I'm like, the second thing that we need to do is we need to identify who already has the presses and highlight those people. who, If they're already making content, Right. Um, and this is where it's really odd because the dude tried to say that I was anti-Semitic. Right. First off, I don't have any idea that he's even Jewish, dude. I don't even I don't know. He's a white man. I don't know you Jewish. I don't know if you are. You're not. I don't I don't even care. Right. Um, none of that stuff even remotely models anything that I'm even thinking about in the process. The fact is you did bad business. And I say what I said, uh, and I got burned at the end of it. Uh, and, and I can live with that because I believe in what I'm talking about and the realness of everything that I'm saying about this community. So cool. Uh, I say we need to identify some people who are actually uh, using the product, making content. So I leave that second meeting. I'm like, all right, how can I get off to a, a very, very quick start? The first person I think of that I see using that blue press as ugly as that swing away is, my man, Los, right? So on my ride home from Jersey, I call Los up and I'm like, yo, I might have an opportunity for you. Y'all can verify this for him. If you want to talk about it or not, it doesn't really matter. It never really went through. And I, and I think about why. Again, keep in mind, he tried to say that I was anti-Semitic, right? This brand new term that Kanye was the cause of or all of that kind of stuff that came out of nowhere. Cool. So I called Lowe's and like, yo, this is what I'm thinking. Can you do X, Y, and Z? Um, and here's what I should be able to do for you, whatever the case is. So that's the very, very first thing. Rolling into that week, we set me up. I get on, um, what's the name of these apps? Uh, one of the apps is called Slack. Um, and some of the other apps or whatever, we have our first team meeting. I roll into the meeting and it's about five people. So nobody actually works with the company, right? If they're not in, I had, uh, bit my lip right here. That's why I keep messing with it. Y'all don't worry about it. Um, 
if nobody works for poor so he got like an outside marketing guy danielle is the only person that she's gonna be really uh i'm gonna talk about her as well um danielle works for the company and then everybody else is pretty much uh packing and shipping and fulfillment in a warehouse and then uh on on the front side of that uh there's somebody who does like if you need is your heat press repaired and they do all that kind of stuff in there but mostly they're all third-party contracts is when it comes to the team of stuff that does stuff for them. So the graphic design guy. So I get on his first meeting and I'm like, yo, it's time. I make it, I put a shirt on a heat press and I, cu I cut it out of vinyl or whatever the case is. And I, we had a little meeting or whatever. And I'm like, you know, Hey, it's time. I shut the press. I open it up and I pull the shirt out. It's puff vinyl or whatever. And I hold it up. It's time to inspire. Right. Like that was my mission. It was time to bring some life into this. It's time to inspire. So what I had learned in the process. And then after that, I met with everybody a bunch of times and tried to figure it out. We created the templates that you guys now see. Um, so when it went from a bunch of white posts of like heat presses and rolls of vinyl or whatever the case was, like stuff like stupid stuff like this. Right. Everything was super product centered and just nothing going on with it when it went from that to what you guys may see now um let me let me go back to the recent posts when it went into stuff like these like these reviews just kind of design post um this guy eventually came along this guy came after after the fact uh but we went through like a little higher process and looking and all of that kind of stuff um, so these are I'm trying to find one post in specifically, cause you guys are going to know where this, um, where this girl comes from. Right. So you talk about like this post, this is my, my home girl, Stephanie, that I found, um, long time ago. Right. Definitely. We'll see you in AC. So this is where we, this is where we are and this is where we end up. Right. So I'm like. Graphic designer, we need to design these posts. We need to have some core pillars, right? We need to highlight customers. We need to show our reviews. So we created these little templates to kind of start out with like actually getting some designs and images uh, into uh, the Instagram feed and all of that kind of stuff. The second thing was I did was I sat with Danielle and I'm like, I, I got to get to know the people, right? Um, so in my experience of, uh, working inside a super color, like I promoted people from positions. Um, and I can go about this into a deeper one of y'all like this kind of talk behind the scenes of, of like the, the bigger end of business and different things. But I was able to promote people, move people from different uh, parts of the companies, improve processes, um, you know, run machines. And, and like, I literally, you know, you, you, you build big companies by the people that you, you know, you, you, you hire and how you utilize them and m maneuver and all of that kind of stuff. This is stuff that I learned, but being able to identify and talk to people. So when it came to Danielle, which is the one that runs the Facebook lives, um, Danielle, uh, is a waste of talent in my opinion. And it's not her fault. And I'm not saying it as her being a bad person, right? She has a background in like art and design and all that stuff. I'm like we got to get you doing that. Like you're answering customer service and all of these problems that somebody, any, anybody can do that. If you got to like design something and put some things together. And so I'm like, how do we get you doing that? Right. But this is his number two person. She's the one that really runs the company. Right. Um, and her husband comes in and it's the reason that I mentioned all of this. Uh, her husband comes in and he does the filming for her to do her lives. And hey, brother, if you want to be, if you had impressions tomorrow, I will be there. If you want to speak to me about anything that I said about you or your woman, I'll be there. Uh, not confrontational. I'm not offering you to a fight, but if you got something to say, I'll be at the impressions expo tomorrow, uh, all weekend. So he comes in and he does the filming or whatever the case is. So I'm like in trying to figure out how we can get her to bring more to the content that they're creating because she has this skill set that a lot of people you can't find yourself a jared you can't find yourself uh certain people who are on tv or on the screen and different things like that you can't find them everywhere 
uh, because that was one of the tasks or things that we were tasked to do in the midst of this entire process. Um, so that was one of the things. And the reason I mentioned that is some of the first thing that we had to do is I went back to tour with them, kind of like the facility. Nobody's there. They got a studio and the studio is in the, the photo that I posted today. Um, and when I tell y'all, I think the studio is in a room, probably as small as the boys room, which holds a bunk bed and a TV on the wall, right? Uh, it's like really, really small. Maybe, hmm, how can I refer to this? This is 450, maybe a hundred square feet, like a very, very small room. And then on the other side of this office, there's a bigger room where customer service used to be that might be 250. And if I'm off, but that's the correlation. Basically, the stuff was in a room. You had to walk around the table. Um, it was very, very small. On the other side, there was a room maybe three times as big, maybe two and a half times as big in reference. Okay. So I'm like, this mean I drive up. I'm like, you got to move the studio. We got to move the studio. Why? I said, because you can set up different scenes. And this is the stuff that you guys are going to see or whatever the case is. You can set up maybe three different views. We can set up a craft uh, a craft backdrop. We can set up a professional backdrop. You just got way more space to operate. Okay? Uh, and I'm like, you move it. You get more space. Nobody's even in here. So let's move the studio. Let's let's move the studio from one place to the other. It's going to make a ton of sense. Build, build settings, build scenes, uh, build backdrops. And now we can probably get more out of Danielle when it comes to content because content is going to fuel this entire thing. You know, he's looking at what Kirk and them are doing over right there. He's like, how can I re-implement it? All right. Um, so from here, uh, the other the, the next task that I had to figure out was we had to find a camera personality just in case Danielle wasn't the person. Um, and this is where all of the discrepancies started to fall in because we still early in the process. So that means we got to get on indeed. We got to create some job postings and all of that kind of stuff. So now it's like, Stan, write a job. We need a job, job description for what this person going to do. So, you know what I do? Supercolor just hired this phenomenal, uh, lady by the name of Erica as a HR person. I had the privilege of sitting in interviews and doing some different things and learning some stuff from her and asking her questions. Everybody that I've ever come in contact with, I am getting some good information from some stuff that I can learn from. It ain't ever about products, more about their experiences and like, so I got to learn how to interview people and from a different level. And we talking about a lady that is a top level, um, HR person, uh, that they ended up hiring. So I hit her up and I asked her, for the job description. Why am I going? This is before AI. I'm not, I don't really know how to write a job. I don't, I'm not a writer. Okay. I'm not a reader. I'm not a writer. And I'm not going to act like I'm somebody I'm not. So I hit her up. It did take her a little while to get back to me. Um, or I think maybe Sergio actually ended up uh, having to get it, get it for me, but I needed the job description. So I got it and I sent it over. It's the same, it's the same thing that we need. That was problem number one. Stan, well, we asked you to write up a job description and you sent us this job description from Supercolor. Okay, change Supercolor to Pro World. It's a job description that we need. It's the same position that we're looking for. We Maybe we could tweak a few things and I did tweak a few things before I sent it over, whatever the case is. Maybe I should have took out some of the other stuff, but I'm very transparent. I'm not like, bro, why? If... We got a person that makes, and I don't know how much she made, close to, if not more than six figures, um, and she's creating jobs. Bro, you just got a $100,000 employee for $0. Do you understand that? No? Okay, I understand. So that was discrepancy number one. So then we go through this process, and he has to vet the employees or whatever the case is. And he flags in ones he likes. We come up with this lady and it's like, okay, I like her. It's like, oh, well, she doesn't really have personality and she's close enough. You know, that's one of the challenges. If you want good talent, you're probably going to have to steal them from another company. It's like, do you know of anybody that we can steal? I said, 
Well, if I did know, like we were able to find Sergio off the couch. Um, that was a, a huge win for Super Color. He does everything over there. Uh, super undervalued person uh, who I value extremely. And if you're looking for somebody inside your company, that's a person. Somebody in a, a big wig in this industry looking to make a splash in the media space. He's the guy, right? And there's, I'm pretty sure there's more, but a uh, super coveted person, in my opinion, a very, very ta strong talent. And I've seen that, um, and that's why I kind of got him over there. But you probably have to steal that person. But to find somebody local, I think that's where we got very lucky, local enough to where you are with the skill set that you need already knowing uh, industry, this industry, another industry, because if you bring somebody in with the skill set from a different industry, it might take them six months to even figure out what's going on. One of the things that I was able to do very, very well is I was able to take somebody who wasn't in the industry and I was able to educate them and get them going really fast because I got my pulse on everything going on, which is something that we could talk about in another video uh, about Hamish, the guy who came in for a marketing director over at Supercolor, um, down, the, down the line, who ended up starting to try to stab me in the back after uh, after I got him online. But this is how uh, the corporate game works. And I don't really know. I just kind of give all my information away. And I, um, you know, I don't, I don't, I'm not one of those people who like tries to hold information to hold people back so that I can stay in my position. I'm, I'm always constantly looking to improve and be better. So, you know, maybe to a fault, I'm willing to share, get you in the position. Uh, if you look at uh, what James is doing over at Econo Transfer and stuff like that when it came to creating content and whatever the case was, this is all stuff that I'm like, yo, this is what you got to do. Do this. This is and you take that information and you go freaking run with it. You know what I mean? Same thing I do with you guys. Take the information. You go run with it. You know, we got people who struggle. We got people who make enough. We got people who made million dollar businesses starting off with the content and different things that we created. All right. So we interview this girl. And I'm asking, like, I learned from Erica. So I'm asking these questions. I'm like, if you had a superpower, what would you be? Um, And, and she's like... I don't know what it was. I would I would disappear or something like that. I would have the ability to disappear, right? And but what happens is what I learned from Erica was that you can pull these traits, right? If you can take their superpower and you could match it along their personality and also match it amongst different things that they said in the interview, and you can figure out if they're telling you the truth. Beyond this is like people reading like level 600 okay so i'm like listen i like this girl right now what i did understand is like she's a crafter version i'm like so she'll fit really well she was actually like an interior decorator i'm like she'll fit really well with like the craft market um so what we could do is we could outfit a studio in her house get her get her a cutter get her a heat press let her learn let her do projects let her share them Etc. Etc. This dude, what well, he ended up using her, whatever the case was, down the line, this dude ended up saying, like, when everything went left, I told you one of the things that he had a problem with was that I got the job description from Erica at Supercolor, from what the job description that they use. The second thing he had a problem with was that I, he felt like I should have been inside of Indeed, vetting. I don't know, all of the random applicants, right? And I'm like, well, either that is not in the list of what it is that I'm supposed to do, right? If you're a consultant, that doesn't mean you go and you hammer nails into the wall, right? So that's one of the second things that he had a problem with. The third thing is I said, I need, we need to move the studio, right? This dude expected me to come and nail and paint and do whatever God else knows in his freaking mind that I was supposed to do in order to move this studio. I'm like, set a budget, find a contractor, move the studio. Let's get that done. Okay. Now, in the meantime, there's things that I'm trying to do to even like aid in the process, because at the end of the day, I understand that this is about 
turning dollars as well. Okay. So when you guys look at me make a video that I've never ever made in my YouTube career, talking about a heat press worth pre-ordering, I'm doing that because this idiot decides after I tell him to, uh, I say, yo, this is going to be one of the best presses in the industry for the price point, for the features, yada, yada, yada. And now we got the Galaxy press over at Marathon, right? Same press. He just painted it a different color. This is the actual original press, right? I'm saying, yo, this is going to be the best press. This guy decides to discontinue it. And I'm like, bro, why would you discontinue something I'm telling you is going to be the best press, right? It's problems with like the wallet press. It's things that I haven't talked about into like a certain level of detail because I also like now I'm like, you know what? I'm not even going to tell them how to fix their problems, right? So I got to like the wallet press is probably one of the worst presses to actually start with, right? After using it for a while, you start to understand these different things, right? And so there's small things that I would probably change about all of them. Um, so they wanted exactly. So one of the, that, that's one of the problems is like, I'm like, did you expect me to come? Like, I didn't even build out my own city. You know how much money I spilled in this building? Way too much money. And I mean like upwards of $50,000, definitely more than that into this building. I am not a contractor. Okay. I'm not a contractor. I like, if you want me to bring my guy from Delaware to there, then that's another thing. But Again, I am not a contractor, so I'm not about to be like I. And, and listen, I'm super hands on. So if we need to get in there, we need to move some stuff around. Like I'll move it, but I'm not a builder. I don't work with my hands. My hands are callous free. You know what I'm saying? They soft. They baby bottom soft. You know, I don't. I'm not a builder. Okay, I'm not about to use a hammer. I just got my first tool set, and actually, one of you guys bought me my first drill. Right, so. You think about that, that's just not who I am, okay? So, we start to look at unreasonable expectations. All of this stuff is documented. And I'm going to jump around a little bit in this conversation um, just because, you know, and listen, I, when I tell you, I can go on and on. How is my sound? I don't even know, like, my sound good around here? I need to acknowledge some of y'all, too. I'm going to have to take a little break. But... So these are some of the things that we run into a problem in. So and I'm going to take a break after this one. Y'all got to give me a little break. I ain't even dropped the intro in this joint or none of that, right? We just got straight to it because I don't know what happened with Greg. He ain't nowhere to be found. I ain't going to be mad, right? We might have to do a part two to this. So one of the other things that happened before we take this, this, this scheduled break real quick. I go up here. During during uh obviously during the pandemic, and we y'all see that that photo, me and Blair. Blair was the one who took the photo in that room. Um, I go up there and we had like I think it was two or three attempts at doing like some lives introducing the product. I'm educating them on the super color product. Y'all know you had to peel it a certain way, press it a certain way. They're pressing it, it's coming up and different things like that. So we I had to kind of like get hands on and kind of show them this process um for how to use the product, right? Sounds good, a little loud. I definitely am peeking now that I pulled the uh the, the sound thing on here. So but I had to go ahead and um we, we scheduled some lives or whatever and some like demos or everything like that. Why? Do we schedule some lives? I show up there. Me and Danielle are feeling ready to film. I kind of show her some different things. And, I'm, you know, we're going through this process. And I'm ed talking about the product, whatever the case is. Um, and kind of giving her the talking points and showing her how I feel. All of that good stuff that I do on a regular basis. No big deal. Why don't they have bandwidth to even go live? So I took two trips. I'm going to say two. I don't know if it was two or three. Okay. But I take two trips up here to run this content with them, for them, and they don't even got internet connection. <laughs> 
So it's like, bro, what you want me to do? Okay. Everything I advise you to do, you do the opposite. Or everything I advise you to do, you expect me to come up here with my hammer that I don't own, nails that I don't have, and to build out this new studio, whatever the case is. You don't even have freaking internet. You don't even got bandwidth to run this live video. And I don't need, like, some of y'all might have seen this, some of y'all, their lives aren't really like that crazy anyway, but you don't even have the bandwidth to run the live. I, I'm, I'm, I'm like speechless here. And one of the thing about like, one of the things when it comes to this stuff is, this is all like a learning experience, but it's all documented. When I tell you it's all documented, I got burned once. You know what I'm saying? I got the I got to figure this out now. So I'm gonna take a break real quick. I'm gonna hit the head. I'm gonna play the intro. I probably will be um <laughs> that's a lot to unfold. This needs to be a three part series. I can't listen. I got stories for days. You know what I'm saying? And the, the beauty is, listen, y'all. I'm talking about this. This is honestly painful, right? Because if I really went into like, it's a lot of lessons that you guys can learn from this stuff. And it's a lot of things that you can implement in your business that I've learned over the years because I, I, I'm truly grateful for the experience that I've gotten to experience when it comes to some of this stuff. But the, at, at certain point, at a certain point, right? Sometimes it's like, I got as close to my moral compass as I possibly could. There was a bunch of times where it's like, Stan, you should just worry about yourself. And now listen, I ain't even talk about like other content creators because that's some aftermath to all of that kind of stuff that I can get to in another video because I don't really care about nobody feelings, right? All the people that I've helped that turn their back on me or looked at it a certain way, I could give two fucks at this point. Um, you know what I mean? I'm a very, very genuine person. To the person who's pillow talking to my homie's wife, right? That then wants to give me a hug. Hey, let's just hug it out. Ain't no hugging it out, bro. What is you talking about, right? Certain things that you just don't do, in my opinion. Um, but it's 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 so many different ways. But I'm super appreciative of the experiences that I got, right? But one of the things that I understood going through this, and I probably held on to trying to salvage some relationships and different things like that. Um, a little bit too long, but what I will say about this is it was a, a beautiful time. It was a beautiful experience because I got to see business from a, at a level that I've never possibly had could have gotten to see it. Not, not never possible. Let me not say never possibly, but I got to see business in a different way at a different level than I had gotten to see it up to this point. Okay. And yeah, we definitely, because I'm I'm about to be an hour into this, and I ain't even got nobody asking me no questions. Uh, but let me get it. Let me go hit the head real quick, and then we're going to come back. And we ain't play the intro, so let's just cue the intro. Yeah. All right, yo, I'm back. I'm back. I'm back and I'm back and I'm better than never. I'm back and I'm back and I'm back as a matter of fact. All right. Uh, so I think I, in the midst of just running to the bathroom real quick, 
I think I, I know where the part two is going to come in. Y'all got any comments, man? Y'all can um y'all can drop them in. Let me see. Ironically, I wonder why Supercut started out uh, of the blue. Call and reach out to me to say what I needed as a business. Stan was standing on business with me personally. I uh, never rock with Pro World. Hey, no doubt, man. Appreciate that. Appreciate the love. Um, So, I was told so many times to worry about myself. When it came to like putting um, other influencers in position or like trying to do something with somebody else, I would literally go in and be like, yo, you should get such and such a raise, right? Or like we should implement this, or this person or whatever. Um, and, you know, now looking back, I understand why. And maybe they were right. Maybe I should have just been the token black guy, right? Um, and, and, just been good, right? Because me being who I am, there's always a safer bet, right? And i.e., y'all know um, who pops up on Pro World's content, not far after. Uh, who visited Supercolor for the first time, not far after. Um, it, and it was a lot of other little things that, bro, if you believe that, then, you know, uh, I it's certain things throughout the... Uh, certain things that throughout the process that I wouldn't have did. Looking back, what would you do different? Um, you know that's I thought about this a, a lot, right? I thought about this throughout the process a ton, and I can't change who I am even now, right? I still have some opportunities to share with some other creators and do different things like that. So I try to pull in some small creators and give them some love. And I mean, real love, bro. Like stop letting companies send you 10 transfers, 20 transfers and telling you to make content, right? Or stop letting them use your content and, and, and you, you really not get nothing out of it. But to answer that question, looking back, what would I do differently? Probably what I would say is the only thing that I would do differently is I would have never stopped my own business and looked at somebody else's business as my own. And when I tell y'all talking about running through the brick wall, I had to learn this. Um, I had to learn something along the later on down the line when it came to um, like these interactions of, with companies. And maybe that'll be it for a part two. But I would have never looked at their business as my own. So I opened up this building and I never really used it in the way that I intended to use it here locally because I was on a roll for 14 days a month. Right. Um, and one day uh, and I mean, let me let me think about how I want to talk about this. Right. So I'm going to tell you guys this when I at the show last year in Texas, I did have um had a my man gavin set myself and rum up to have, have a sit, sit down and we had a conversation um and you know to to be 1000 percent honest i could say that this entire process hurt me right um and you know for someone to say like yo you literally changed my life you literally changed my family's life and different things like the entire process um, but then to also tell you that, uh, at some point, oh man, what about in this case, what about Matt's family and his business, bro? What about my family, my business? That dude literally robbed me. Right. And the reason I say the dude literally robbed me is because everything that I laid out that he said wasn't working or didn't do or wasn't doing is what he in, in, then continued to do and to follow behind. Right. And here's why I know it. Remember, I showed you the post. And this has nothing to do with her. Like, I love this girl. We don't talk anymore. Um, well, we don't talk too much anymore. Um, but the girl who did the Stephanie, who does the uh, leopard tie dye, right? Never shopped at Pro World. Okay. Um, I got her from screen printing. She learned from my homegirl, Jennifer uh, Sanderson. Um, I found her and I'm like, yo, you make great content. We could possibly use you over here. Super blah, 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 blah. Right. She never shopped at Pro World, and I'm trying to get her a new heat press to go along with whatever. So this is one of the people that I'm like, let's get her a heat press. Let's do X, Y, and Z. Um, and the first customer feature that they ran was on Stephanie. 
And she was never even a freaking customer of them. In fact, they would not even give her heat press when we when I when I recommended it. This dude, Matt, who called me one day, and when I tell you I got proof of all of this stuff, this dude called me one day and said, Stan, I don't really know how to say this, but I'm jealous of the work that you do at Supercolor. This is a phone call. And I just had to like, bro, what? And the thing that irritated me was you jealous of, first off, I'm flying across the country. I'm flying across the country to go to Supercolor, right? Staying in hotels. It was at one point, and I'm a 1,000%. At one point, I looked at Rum, and I said, Rum, you're not working anymore. Right? I get it. We got families. We got certain things, but I could be home. I could be home with my family, you know, spending time with my woman, with my kids, and I get here. And we used to be grinding. Like, I'm there all work. And I'm at the hotel room all, all, all weekend or whatever. By my goddamn self. Right? And, I, again, we things go how they go. But this dude literally called me and said, Stan, I'm jealous of the work that you do over at Supercolor. Now, here's how, like, I'm an hour and nine minutes away from this place. I've already driven there. Two times or three times, whatever it was, to um to do live streams or whatever the same stuff that I willing to do there. Like I don't, I don't really, I just work, man. Like I don't, I ain't counting the hours. I'm not like I just work, okay. And I literally had driven to this place multiple times. Mm, my lip is like bothering the crap out of me, but. And the only reason that we can't produce content and create content is because this room is small as hell. And apparently all the money you're making right now, you ain't you choosing not to pay the cable people. And I'm making that as a joke. But really, you know, you don't have enough bandwidth to even run the live streams that we trying to run, right? I'm like, let's get let's do get a better camera. Let's do X, Y, and Z. Boom, boom, boom. Let's do these little things in order to improve whatever it is that we need to improve to do. So this is literally what was going on. And I think not to say that I'm going to end with this, but one of the things that he said is like, well, what happened to running the story on my dad? And remember, I said in the very first meeting, I'm like, yo, people should hear from your dad. Right. He asked me. What happened to like. You supposed to run the story of my dad. We supposed to run a story of your dad. You hating on your dad. You don't even want people to know nothing about your dad. You didn't want people to hear about your dad because it would probably lessen anything that you have ever done for the company because you didn't do anything. Your dad did all the work. You were afraid to put the old man who's about to check out. And this is not my words. I'm not even being like I wanted to. I wanted to learn something business acumen from this dude, right? Not to say that you don't have any business acumen because I'm sure you do. You've run into companies. Some people crash companies or whatever the case is. But you asking me what happened to the story on your dad. We never really did the story on your dad, on my dad or yada, yada, yada. But in all honesty, you didn't want that to happen. You, I never met your dad. You never presented him to me at the office. You never even let me talk to him to even understand what the story was. Hey, maybe Rum on his new show that is produced by him uh, that we came up with together will come over here, fly to New Jersey and interview your dad since you were afraid to put your dad on camera. Right. And listen. This is my account of everything. I'm pretty sure he got his side. But it's going to be a lot more. I don't want to go two hours by myself, more an hour and four minutes into it. I'm going to jump into some of these comments. Um, and uh, I got to find my guy. What is I want, I want to find. Shout out to him. Um, let me see. F-O-M. I think it's F-O-M-D-T-F. F-O-M-D-T-F. 
Make sure y'all check him out. He uh he had some conversations or, or he had a, a couple videos about this. Um as well. Let me see, let me see, let me see. Hey yo, listen, been rocking for four years. I bought kind of super color with a straight for you. I had every channel. I could have told him cancer super color. Uh, when it went through that, man, I appreciate it, but it ain't that serious, man. Honestly, as as much as I I I I, I don't, you know, when people hit me up throughout this process, I'm like, listen, bro, you got to do what's best for your business. I believe in the product. Uh, I did believe in the product. I don't believe in the people, um, because I believe there's a certain way that you go about things. And what I've learned is there ain't no certain way, right? When you come from the streets, when you come from the hood, when you come from nothing. Um, and then you learn and you, you ascend in the business realm, you got to learn to do things a little bit differently. Right. Um, and I carry a lot of the things, you know, like, let's just say when I sat down and had a conversation recently, it's like somebody told me, say, yo, I wanted to kill you for what you said or the diff whatever the case is. Right. And I'm like, you don't understand. Like, when you say I want to kill, I wanted to kill you. It is more so of like maybe like get my lawyers or maybe punch you in the face or something like that. May, I don't even think it goes physical, but like no. When I say it, like nah, that means I might like drive up to where you live and shoot you for for what it is that you like. I got friends that died over five hundred dollars. We talking about. A quarter of a million dollars. Right? And this is in, in all honesty in the scale. And this actually kind of drew me back a little bit. And I've had like other little um opportunities, whatever the case is. Uh, but I, I really don't even feel comfortable um being in this position again, which is kind of why I wanna I wanna really like kind of help the people that I help and like exit myself out of the industry and uh, there's an Instagram page you guys should follow called Flooded Way Print Co. Let me make sure it's right. It's called Flooded Flooded Screen Prints. He's out of uh, Canada. You should follow him and you should ask him to be in his DM, uh, in his close friends where he talks about print companies and all of the bull lies and all of that kind of stuff i do it out in the open and i'm probably going to bring him on the on the podcast at some point um but again it's, it's it's different levels to this man and i i mean one thousand percent i got pure intentions right um but what i've learned is like matt was trying to sell his company to anybody who would Filled it like he was trying to get super color to buy it. Um, when you talk about it's funny because when I was going into it back and forth with Goon Life, right? I'm like, you know, or even when um my guy from my guy Carl uh sat down and we had the conversation. I think he tried to say I was racist because I because I said when you when you go across the country and you look in print shops, it's either um I said it's, it's you see the Mexican people working or it's uh like rock star like um rock band type people right this is my assessment from traveling this is factual this has nothing to do, this is like you look at it this is what you see right i haven't walked in the only place that i know that tries in like full full force uh is rby out of atlanta who you might walk in and has a bunch of african-american or black people working inside of a black owned print shop so this is a full blown assessment of what I seen, but in in retrospect to it all, they when I was going back and forth with Goon Life, it's kind of like you know the mentality behind all of this stuff, um, bro. We're being exploited, like you know. Listen content creators are being exploited and there's more that i can go into um but i've already talked to a bunch of people about what i think and i and i see you know my plan very very early on 
initially was, you know what? I'm going to give the people the information for free. Don't mind me. It's like keep falling. But anyway, I'm going to give the people the information for free and I'm going to find a way for the companies to pay me. And I was able to do that. And at some point I had at some point going through this process, you know, um, I had a deal. I probably could have went to the lawyers when I had a deal with the workhorse and all of that kind of stuff that uh, that I lost throughout this process and some other things that went left and all of this stuff and blackballing and blackballing somebody or whatever the case is um it looks it, it it doesn't always look like it's out front um and they're in this stuff together you think they're not you think kirk and, and matt aren't in this together they are and they we look at it like this company and that company are are, are man listen to me when i tell you you know just listen to me when i tell you they in this together right and my story is the case of that right uh, and it's so much more that we're going to get to throughout this process. I used to try a, a quality lapel mic or something to move around a little bit too much. Uh, I'm with you. Is Mike the CEO of Supercolor? Yes, he is. Uh, I might I might work on that, my mic situation a little bit. I think on the other podcast, it's a little bit easier. I just think I'm so energetic. Man, this thing's bothering me. This is a good portion, um, but this is part one. I'm going to have to title this during part one. Later on down the line, we might have to come back and, and, and flat out call it a part two or whatever the case is. But listen, I want y'all to know, I'm never letting up on that. I will never, ever let up. So everybody messaged me saying, let, let it go a pro world. Listen, I'm perfectly fine now outside of like, I'm just going to make my money outside the industry. I may never work with another company in the industry. Whatever the case is, if you know, I, I I don't ever. And one day, maybe we just talk about content creators in this whole situation uh, who have something to do with this. Um, I never would like even if throughout this process, I never would tell anybody not to go get their money. That was, you know, like, bro, you go go over there, and get that deal. But don't let this happen to you. Right. One of the things if we want to better the situation in this case. Um, what we One of the things that we need to do is. We got to be honest with where things are. You know what I'm saying? Right? Like, when I talk to other content creators in position to to to, to kind of get a deal, what they should be looking for, I just give you things to consider. You go figure it out for yourself. Right? I'm going to tell you, like, my perspective on what I know and how things have happened and maneuvered and all of that kind of stuff. You take that. Learn from my experience. You go build on it. You go and go get a bigger deal than what I ever had. You know what I'm saying? I don't think they they gonna be handing out. I I can't even say. I can't say I don't think they're gonna be handing out six figure deals. Um, but it's possible. Um, but again, if I if I were to do anything different, I would have never stopped what I had going on. Looked at Supercolor as my own company. Um, literally, you know, uh, just as the type of person I am, I've run through the wall for. Whatever it is that I'm working on, whatever the people I care about, my friends is working on or whatever the case is, I go a lot harder for other people's businesses. And I'll never forget the day that I sat down and I'm, I'm making some moves. And this happened to be with LaRussell. Uh, and I'm like, we should do this, this, this and this. And one of the things that started to irritate me was that, like, I don't like going out. Um, you tell me what I can and can't do because I'm, I don't want to go out and put my neck on the line, my name on the line. And um, then have to come back and it'd be something completely different, right? And that was the case. It's like, Stan, we can't no longer move off your gut. And I'm like, dang, that, it kind of like, I'm like, what? It's like, my gut is what got us here, right? My gut is what got us here. When everything hits, when all else failed, when you were knocking on doors and none of them decorators, none of these professional platforms, none of these people that you're paying to be a part of now would even open the door for you. My people, my community, these people and everything that I put into it 
was what allowed them to come back and say, oh, no, let's look at this product. When you were doing 30 orders a day and you started to do 230 orders a day and had more accounts than you could open and it was $200,000 a month to $300,000 a month when it goes at 2.2 million and 2.3 million and all of that kind of stuff, it wasn't because you knocked on doors. It was because I put my gut, my intuition, my hard work into it and I let go of what I had worked on and what I had built to do that. So if you don't think I'm fucked up by this, y'all, I am. I ain't gonna be lying. I'm not even gonna lie to you, right? But it was I'm I feel hurt because I trusted people and I let go and certain it's a lot more. It's a ton more. But I ain't I ain't denying the fact that I'm hurt by that shit. You know what I'm saying? I it set me back probably 10 years of where I would be if I just continued on my own path doing my own thing. And that's something that I got to embrace. But if you ever, 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 ever in your life sit down with somebody that you think is a friend, a mutual mentor, and what I mean by that is a mentor to you and you're a mentor to them in one way, shape, or form, right? And this is a mutual respect and being and you've been through the trenches and you built something together, right? Whether you had ownership of it or not, and they tell you to consider some random outsider's family over your own, I'm going to just leave that there. Just got to lose respect for that person, right? And not in the sense, like, respect moving forward. You know what I mean? People change over time. And what you realize at some point is that maybe the bossless person that you thought was bossless had a goddamn boss the whole time. You know what I'm saying? So, this is part one, man. I got a lot more stories for y'all. I might have to, like, do something without Greg. Where I just where I just sit back and talk my shit. You know what I'm saying? I got I had this idea for a podcast called I Stand On It. I stand on it. All right. You know, we ain't counting views, y'all. We ain't doing none of that stuff no more. I'm honestly over the content creation game. I got all this stuff here that I keep sending and I keep talking about it. And I owe some people some content. So Uninet, Joe over there, I apologize. I owe you some content. I just got to get my life together in a little bit of different ways. And that happens to be outside of the industry. And then I can get back to it. But ain't no, I'm putting my foot on y'all necks. I'm putting my foot on the industry's neck. Uh, at the end of the day, they got to do right by people. Uh, this might be my farewell from the show standpoint. Uh, what I mean by that is I may not be attending another show after this. Um, I may not have open speaking engagements. But we're going to build our own platform this time, right? We're going to build our own platform. We're going to do it our way. Damn, this thing is bothering me. I hate the way it look. Everything. But listen, uh, if you want to help, if you want help in your business, check out t-shirthustlersclub.com, professional screen printing, professional decoration business, whatever it is. We're doing everything in there. That's the new platform. We're building it out. It's like, it's going to be great. Um, we're going to do weekly coaching in that joint. We're going to have a a, a great community in there. Um, yeah, so that has started. It's in there. We got the t-shirt business roadmap. All of the master classes are going to be in there. It's so much more. We bringing in guests. One thing that I get to give you guys from everything that I've done over the last few years is I went, uh, I've met so many people, so many genuine, great people, Great relationships, people that I haven't gotten anything from, that haven't given anything to me, but nothing but great information and relationships and everything is going to go there uh, moving forward. This was a shameless plug. I appreciate you guys for hanging out tonight. It's so much more. Matt, I'm on your ass. Danielle, you just a part, You just collateral damage because I ain't like what your husband said about me. Uh, and he got to see me about that. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's it for this episode. Love you guys. I appreciate you guys. And we got to go out on the intro.